Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to be doing a high-level introduction to using Ghidra. For this demonstration, I will be using VirtualBox with the extension pack. I'll also be using one virtual install of CSI Linux, the latest version, and all my network adapters have been set to NAT Network. To begin this overview, let's go up here to my application launcher. Let's scroll on down until we come to Malware Analysis and Reverse Engineering, and in the Context menu, let's launch Ghidra. Once the Ghidra Start screen goes away, we are presented with the Active Project window. Now, anytime you need to find out information about any feature that you're currently working with inside of Ghidra, just make sure your mouse is inside of that feature, and then press the F1 key. That brings up the Ghidra documentation, and wherever you're at inside of Ghidra, and you press F1, that is where the documentation will take you. The first thing you have to do to get started with Ghidra is create a new project. Now to do this, we're just going to go up to File, and from the Context menu, we're going to select New Project. On this next window, you have the option of a non-shared project or a shared project. We're going to accept the default and click next. On the next page is where we can select the location where we're going to save our work and where we can give the project a user-friendly name. I'm going to go ahead and accept the default for the location where my work will be saved and I've named my project CrackMe0x00. Let's go ahead and click finish. We next need a file that we can import to analyze. Now to do this, I'm going to go back up here to my application launcher and I'm going to select web browser. Once my browser has opened up, I'm going to go to the following GitHub repository and I'm going to find that file that I need called crackme0x00.exe. On this repository, you're going to find a large number of crackme files. We're going to begin by using the first one. I'll also make this link available to you in the video description. To start this download process of this particular file, I'm just going to find it from the menu here, and I'm going to click it. That's going to take me over to the download page. From here, I'm just going to click on download. And if you get this warning about the file being potentially dangerous, just go ahead and use the up arrow here and select keep from the context menu. Once your file has been downloaded, go ahead and close out your browser. Anytime we're using Ubuntu, Kali, or CSI Linux, and we download a file from the internet, it is going to be saved to our default location, which is the downloads folder. Now we can import this particular file into Ghidra one of two ways. I can open up the downloads folder, and I can drag that file into this window here, or I can go up to File, and from the context menu, I can select Import File. Now remember, we saved it to our downloads directory, and there is the file that we downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and just double click it, and it begins the import process. And the first thing you're going to be presented with is some information about the file we're about to import. Go ahead and select OK, and now the importation moves on. And we're going to be presented with some more information. So now we have the results of the importation. Now this screen is rather large and it's not going to allow me to have access to the button that I need to press OK. So I'm going to go ahead and resize it. And then I'm just going to pull it back up here like so. I'm going to resize it just a little bit more. Move it back up. And now I have access to the OK button. Now that we have our file imported into Ghidra, we can begin the analysis process. Now to do this, you have one of two options. You can double click the imported file, or you can use the green dragon. I'm going to go ahead and just double click the file. That brings us up to the next screen, where it's going to ask you, do you want to start the analysis? We're going to go ahead and select yes. And on the next screen, we have all of the default scanners that we can use to perform the analysis. Let's go ahead and scroll on down until we come to the Windows PE86 scanner. Let's go ahead and check that box. And if you want to know more information about any of these scanners, just highlight the scanner. And over here in the right window pane, underneath description, you can get some more information. 
Once you have your scanner selected, go ahead and click the Analyze button. And over here on the right, you can see the analysis taking place. Now this message is going to pop up because when Ghidra imports the file, it's going to run it against all of those different scanners we selected. We do not have a file that the PDP Universal Scanner can actually use or find. Therefore, it's going to pop up an error message. To get rid of this error message, you would go back into the scanners. You would find the PDP Universal Scanner and uncheck the box, and that message would no longer appear. We can go ahead and ignore this message and just click OK. Once Ghidra has completed the analysis of our file, it's going to break out that information into these five different windows for us. We have the Program Trees Manager, the Symbol Tree, the Data Type Manager, and we also have the Listings Pane. Over here to the right, we have the Decompiler. We're going to go through these windows one at a time, but anytime you want to know more information about what these windows offer, just place your mouse inside the window, press the F1 key, and the Ghidra documentation will take you right to that particular section of its documentation and give you more information about that window. We're going to begin over here in the left window pane, and we're going to start off with the Program Trees Manager. The Program Trees Manager is used to organize programs into a tree-like structure. The Program Tree Manager allows you to create, delete, rename, and close program tree views. Within the Program Trees Manager, I can right-click on the folder that we have created called CrackMe0x00.exe, and I can organize the sections of disassembly code in different ways. We can do this by just right-clicking on our file here, and I can select Modulize By and the Subroutine, and on each subroutine, we have a choice of either complexity and depth or dominance. I've chose dominance, and down here at the bottom, you'll see that we have a new folder called dominance. And if I open up the folder, you'll see that we have all these programs that are presented to us in a different view. Directly below the Program Trees Manager is the Symbol Tree window. Within this window, you are shown all the different symbols used with the program itself. The different symbols are shown as folders, labeled Imports, Exports, Functions, Labels, Classes, and Namespaces. Let's try expanding the Imports section to see the various DLLs and functions used by the target. Here's my Import folder. I'm going to go ahead and expand it. And underneath, you can see that we have two DLLs that are associated with Imports. Let's expand the container for the msvcrt.dll. And let's scroll on down and we'll see that we have different functions. Let's stop here and look at the scanf function. And if I click on this, you'll see that over here in the listing panes, we see how the scanf function is connected to the msvcrt.dll. Now we can also check to see how this scanf function is also referenced with other objects inside of the program just by right clicking on it and we can go down here to select show references to that brings up another window and in here we can see that the scanf function is actually referenced to two different locations up inside of the program using the msvcrt.dll and if i click on these over here in the decompile window, I can get more information about how this is coded up inside of the program. Now I can close out the window, and here in the listing pane, you're also going to see that this information is presented to you in the assembly code. Directly below the symbol tree window is the data type manager. The data type manager allows you to see all the defined types, including the built-in types, those specific to the binary, and others that were included with Ghidra. These data types can be packaged as libraries, and they can be reused from one program to the next. So underneath the book where it says crackme0x00.exe, if we expand that, we see all these different data types that are currently associated with this particular program. 
Now if I expand the CRTDefs.h folder, you can see the different data types that are bundled with this particular program. Now here we have a data type called size underscore t. If I right click on this, from the menu I can select find uses of. That's going to show you where this data type is being used throughout the program. So in the window that pops up, it tells you that the data type size underscore t is being utilized at 410 different locations up inside of the program. Moving over to the right, we have the listing pane. The listing window shows us the disassembled code and allows us to begin the process of piecing together what the different portions of the binary are doing. Now we can customize our listing view just by going up here and clicking on this editing icon that we have available to us. Go ahead and click on that. And if I go into the instructional data, you'll see that I have all these different fields that I can remove, I can adjust, and I can add additional fields and spacers as needed. For instance, if I want to change the location of the address for the functions, I can click here where it says address, and then moving my mouse over here to the spacer, I can move and adjust where the location of the address is located in the view. To help optimize my view, I'm going to move the address field over just a little to the left to get rid of the space that's currently showing here. To do this, I'm just going to highlight the address. I'm going to go over here to Open Data. I'm going to click on the address field. And now I'm going to place my mouse on that spacer, and I'm just going to drag it on over like that. Since we won't be using the bytes information, I can go ahead and highlight that and go up here and I can right click on where it says bytes and I can remove that particular field from my view. Now anytime I want to get back to the default view, I can just right click in here and from the context menu I can select reset all formats. To close out the listings window editor, I can just go back up and click that icon one more time. What we're looking at is the default view for Ghidra. If you want to add more windows from the taskbar, you select windows, just open it up, and now you see all the different windows that you can add into your display. To get access to the contextual editor up inside of the listings pane, you can right click and that will bring up the contextual editor. The contextual menu allows you to perform actions such as patching instructions, setting a bookmark, commenting, and editing labels. All the way over to the right you have the decompile window. The decompile window shows us Ghidra's best estimation of the high level code that represents the assembly code in the listing pane. Inside of the symbol tree window I've chosen a function. Now if I go over here to the compiler I can take an if statement, like so, and it will show me inside of the assembly code exactly where it is associated with within the program. This feature allows us to build a mental map of what groups of assembly instructions map to which high level instructions. And so that's going to conclude our overview of the high level features that are available up inside of the Ghidra program. In our next video presentation, we're going to pick up right where we left off here and we're going to begin the analysis or the reverse engineering of the CrackMe0x00.exe file. You got questions, you got concerns about any of the information that was presented to you in this short video presentation, please do not hesitate. Reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.